Hello, Oscillator Sync here. This is the Morphos from Norand. It is a Eurac module containing two analog VCOs and then lots and lots of other tricks, uh, including wave shape morphing, um, contextual modulators, presets, and preset morphing in three different dimensions. It is a complex module with a lot of things to say about it. Now, if you follow me on YouTube, you will know that I'm not exactly one to shy away from a longer video, but there's so much that I want to talk about on the Morphos that I think it would probably do it a disservice uh, to try and cram everything into a single video. So rather than doing that, what I'd like to do over the course of three videos is explore the Morphos in different contexts and different levels of complexity across three patches. So what I'd like to do in this video in particular, and I'm quite excited about this because it's not something I ever really do with my Eurorack setup, is that I would like to take Morphos and use it as the centerpiece in a conventional monosynth setup. So the goals with this patch in particular are to demonstrate the core tonality of the oscillators, have a listen to the wave shapes, have a listen to how the uh, through zero FM sounds, that kind of thing. And also to listen to how uh, it sounds in this more sort of conventional setting because not everyone wants to make alien sounds with their racks at all time which is a surprise to me because that's what I want to do most of the time but actually being able to um, demonstrate how it can be used in that conventional setting I think is a, a useful thing. Um, I also want to take the opportunity to introduce the functionality around the contextual modulators and the way that the um, CV inputs operate and what they can actually allow us to do because although Morphos is quite a generously proportioned module um, because of the utility that's built into it you can actually save on other modules because of the way that some of these CV inputs work. They're quite clever. Um, so I want to kind of show that off as well. Um, in future videos, we'll dive into some of the more um, uh, intense use of the contextual modulators and also into the presets. We won't really be touching on that today. It'll be more conventional usage, um, more sort of general VCO kind of stuff. But it still has a lot to offer in that area. In the interest of transparency, Noran did send this module over to me to make some videos on, uh, but uh, they haven't asked for any content in particular, and they've had no editorial input into anything that I'm creating here. I will also mention that this is a pre-production module, um, so on the final versions, the knobs are different and better, um, and the firmware might be slightly different, but the core tonality should be obviously more or less the same. So with that said, let's patch some stuff up. Right, so in terms of what's already patched in here, just on the malts at the top of the palette case here, I've got um, a key step pro just out of the shot, and this is my pitch. This is the gate, and then this is the mod wheel. And that's just so that we have a way to control our mono synth. So I think to get started, let's just have a listen to the raw tone of one of the VCOs. So I'll just come out of the output here, I'll come into Quadrat, which we'll use as a mix between the two oscillators. Um, there is no sort of combined output here on the Morphos. Um, then we'll come out of there and go into my output mixer, I think. So we'll come out of B so that we can mix A and B together. I can just go in there. And then I'll also grab the pitch from the key step and pop it into the volts per octave so we have some pitch control. Turn up this channel. Lovely stuff. Uh, so, um, what do we got here? So, um, let's have a listen to the different waveforms. So we'll go, maybe go across to the saw first. So we have a saw on the end here. Satisfyingly buzz buzzy. Then we can morph into a square wave. Oh, I love this area in the middle here. Lovely stuff. So yeah, we have our square wave here. Nice and weighty, nice and buzzy. Cool, and we can morph into a triangle. 
Just got a little bit of fur on it. Cool. And then down to a sine wave. And this is, of course, modulatable, and we'll get to that in a, in a moment. Um, we have a detune which goes up a tritone and down a tritone. And we then have the through zero FM. So this is going to FM oscillator one against oscillator two. And then if we do it on oscillator two, it goes the other way around. But you can hear there. It's a great way to introduce additional harmonics and until you get right to the end of the knob, even, even not, it, it will barely ever throw it out of tune because it's through zero, which means we can use this as a two operator analog FM synth, which is pretty cool. Um, perhaps we'll do that in a minute. Um, at the moment I've got uh, oscillator 2 tracking, but obviously if we change the pitch of oscillator 2, we're going to get different sounds. And of course this is also going to affect different waveforms differently. Yes. Just so many different tones. We'll play with those a little bit in this. This demo, I think. We'll also get different tones depending on the modulator's waveform as well. Yes, so lots of uh, things available there. Oof. Great stuff. Just put a bit of spring reverb on that and you're done. Lovely stuff. Okay, um, let's blend those two oscillators together then. Uh, we'll grab the output of oscillator 2 here, we'll bring it into quadract as well. And we'll turn it up. So. Um, if you don't have track turned on here, you will need to malt your volts per octave into here, or use obviously a different uh, sequence altogether. These can operate as individual oscillators, but if we turn track on, then the two oscillators are going to track together. And then frequency here is going to allow us to choose the relative tuning between them. It's also worth noting that the frequency knob here, which you'll be able to hear, is stepped. So once uh, it has uh, warmed up the oscillators, you should have frequency as your fine control, and then detune as your as your fire control. <laughs> Sorry, we were doing conventional sounds, weren't we? My bad. Can't help myself sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Good. Right. Um, so let's just patch up the rest of a mono synth, shall we? So rather than coming out of there straight into the mixer, let's go into a filter. I'm going to use my new Hampshire electronics um, dual VCF which is a 
MS20 style filter will come out of, actually, let's just hear that. Let's just hear a filter sweep. We love filter sweeps, don't we? Uh, turn those up. Good stuff. Could also use both for a band pass if we wanted. Resonance. <laughs> Sensing good. Okay, so we've got uh, that there, and we'll uh, go out of there into uh, VCA. This one will do. And come out with VCA. Oop, up into here. Uh, and then we're going to need to trigger some of this stuff. So uh, let's take a gate from here. And we go into stages. Something like that. And then take stages output into the VCA. CV amount up. And uh, maybe we could take that same output. Actually, let's use a different um, envelope for our filter. So we'll take another gate here. Always work in that order for gates with stages. And we'll take that output into the CV input here. Turn the cutoff down, turn the CV amount up. Now we have a conventional kind of monosynth patch. which works very nicely. Cool, okay. So that's a really, really straightforward kind of monosynth setup uh, using Morphos. So let's take a look at what else we can do using some of its other controls and maybe exploring some of the other sounds here. So the first thing I want to do is maybe look at modulating this wave control here. So I'll just turn down oscillator two just for a second. Because as I mentioned, I really like this spot here. So let's set that kind of in the middle of that sweet spot. And the kind of normal way that you would approach this maybe would be that we would take uh, an, an LFO, so we'll just turn this channel of stages into a looping. Okay, there's an LFO, lovely. Uh, we will take this output here and we would go into the wave input here. Now, so, the inputs for the wave, volts per octave A, volts per octave B, which is your detune, and the through zero FM, these are all contextual. So if I want to select that I want to work on a particular input here, we can tap the light that goes above it. You'll see that it cycle through a couple of different uh, colors there. We'll get to that. Um, so um, when the light is white, the amount just acts as a attenuverter. So if I put this to the middle, we shouldn't hear any movement or very little. And then as I turn it up. Uh, 
and it's acting like you would expect any uh, CV input, basically, with an attenuverter to act on any module. So in order to use it this way, obviously, we've used up uh, an LFO, in my case, a channel of stages. But the nice thing about Morphos is it has a bunch of these contextual modulators. So let's unplug this for a second, like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap it once, which puts it into this orange mode here. Now in the orange mode, um, this will be modulated by an inbuilt LFO. Uh, the amount and rate of which can be set here. So if we set this in the middle, So each of these inputs, wave, volts per octave, A and B, and through zero FM, each have their own individual LFO. So these LFOs aren't shared, they are per CV input. So we've immediately saved a, uh, an LFO here. Um, down here we have type and wave. Wave is going to change the waveform. Triangle now, square, there's a saw, and background to sign there. Uh, type is going to switch between uh, LFO range and audio rate. Wow. So we have audio rate LFOs per input here, and um, we can uh, use them to create entirely new timbres on top of what we've actually got. Obviously, audio rate modulating uh, the, uh, uh, the volts per octave is going to give us you know, additional FM on top of the 30 FM from one oscillator to another, which is kind of a big deal. The rate is always related to the oscillator itself, so it will always track across the keyboard as well, as long as you've got volts per octave coming in. Cool. But I wanted that, that nice little movement uh, just on that um, wave shape there. lovely stuff and if we now bring the other one in and do the same thing and have them goes at slightly different rates so tap that one to select it tap it to go orange just adjust the rate a little bit put it in that sweet spot lovely movement Very, very cool. So what else might we want to do with this um, mono synth sound? Well, you may notice that here we have a button called sync, and this is going to turn on oscillator sync, where oscillator two is synchronized to oscillator one. So now, yeah, they should sound in tune. And if we were to change the frequency of oscillator two, rather than hearing uh, uh, a pitch change, we'll hear more of a timbral change. So the way that we would maybe usually use sync is we would uh, make use of one of our um, envelopes to modulate the pitch of two to get that classic sync sound. So let's uh, let's do it the old school way first. So I'll just take the, um, let's just use the filter. So I'll just take this and use a stack cable here. There you go. Go into the volts per octave here. Select this, turn the amount up. Uh, 
and we can get that kind of classic sing sound going on there, which is very pleasing. Yes, indeed it is. Um, and as I say, that would be the kind of old school way of uh, approaching that. However, because we have these contextual um, modulators, we can do it a slightly different way instead. Uh, so um, we've seen that we can uh, press this once to go orange, which gives us a um, an LFO. If we press it again, it goes green, and this is going to give us a um, an envelope instead. So we need something to trigger the envelope here. So rather than patching in an amount to the volts proxy, we're now going to put in a trigger. So we'll just grab our gate signal here, pop it in there. And now we have the rate and amount of this envelope on the volts per octave instead. So starting in the middle, no sync. And again, uh, rather than using a um, an envelope from somewhere else in the system, we have an envelope which is dedicated just to this parameter. Again, this envelope isn't shared with any of the parameters. We can set each parameter up to have a different envelope, and they could all be being triggered by different things. Something we'll look at in a future video, I think. Okay, let's take that uh, sync out just for the moment and we'll try this a similar trick, uh, but this time we'll maybe look at using it on the through zero FM to create, as I say, a um, an analog to operator FM. So uh just put those back into tune a little bit. Um, maybe turn down to a sine wave. Yeah, and now we can patch uh, this in. Now we'll use oscillator one, perhaps we'll patch that into the through zero FM. So at the moment it would be an amount, but if we tap this till it goes green, we now have a um, an envelope on that without having to use an envelope. Maybe just hear the one oscillator. Turn off that wave modulation as well. Very nice. And if we change the frequency of oscillator two, we're going to get different um, things going on there. And we don't have to have the two of them tracking either. Which will give us much more chaotic kind of sounds. If we 
have the other oscillator also being um, through zero FM. With the other one, we'll get much more complex sounds as well. As we made that little bit clickier on the envelope, we'll start to get something that's kind of glassy and metallic. One, one uh, operator, sorry, two operator FM synth, right? It's nice. Not a normal uh, analog sound, but nice all the same. Um, so, what else can we do? Ah, I know. Let's get something with some vibrato. So we'll unpatch that, perhaps. Uh, take that back down off there. Get back to a more conventional sound. Let's get some vibrato on here. So you can probably guess uh, an easy way to get vibrato here would be to come across to maybe this false proctive B here. Uh, tap that to go into the um, LFO mode and turn up the amount. are going away there but we don't necessarily want that happening all of the time of course so and um, when you're in lfo mode on the uh, cv inputs here if you give it a uh, cv so um, what i'll do is i'll take my mod wheel here if we give it cv that's going to be the amount of the lfo now so with that turned down We have no uh, pitch wobble there, turning up the mod wheel. And the amount here sets the maximum here. Cool. Sorry, I hope I have demonstrated um, that even when you're using the Morphos in a more conventional role as just a normal VCO or two normal VCOs, it still offers a whole lot of interesting tricks and functionality that gets us to more interesting patches without having to patch in a whole lot of additional modules. I mean, really here, I mean, the only thing that I've got plugged into it is, um, in fact, no, I haven't even got stages plugged into it, have I? All I've got plugged into it here are um, the uh, gate pitch and mod wheel from my key step and the contextual modulators are doing all of the other stuff. Yes. So we've saved on a whole lot of um, LFOs and uh, whole lot of LFOs and envelopes just by making use of the stuff that's built in here uh, to get additional functionality out.
And certainly in the next video in the series, we're going to be throwing a whole lot more at these contextual modulators and we'll be doing a whole lot of more audio rate stuff and we'll do a whole lot more clocking of different uh, triggers to get different events happening um, in a less straightforward patch, a less conventional patch, but hopefully we've seen here how well it does in this role, <laughs> regardless. Because it does do very well as a normal VCO. Even though it can get a bit weird as well. Anyway. I hope that was useful and interesting. If you did enjoy the video, then it's always appreciated if you could leave a thumbs up on the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with any more. Yes, <laughs> any more synth fun we have coming up soon. Until next time. Take care.